So for this week on Cyber School, we're going to talk a bit about understanding our different relay devices and accessories. At CyberDigital, we've got a wide berth of different accessory products. That's kind of, you know, frankly, one of the cool things of our products. And two of the major accessory products that we have for one of our big product lines, the Intercom product line, is going to be our relay style accessories, both the standard door strike relay or the networked dual door strike relay. But these can provide a little bit of confusion, even with our addition of the SIP dual relay controller. So it can get a little bit confusing about what's a relay, which product is right, and just kind of understanding how a lot of this stuff works. And hopefully we can accomplish that and uh, you'll have a better understanding by the end of today's session. So first and foremost, before we even talk about which re what relay controllers are and what they do, we got to understand what a relay is because that's kind of part and parcel with understanding the accessories. If you don't know what we're talking about, how are you going to know which accessory to pick? So a relay is essentially a switch, kind of like a light switch, but it's controlled electronically. Um, you know, it can be something that, you know, say, for example, you could just click a button on an app and it toggles kind of like, you know, how your heater will work if you pull up your Google Nest application and you tell it to kick on your heater because your office is cold and your heater kicks on. Well, something in there triggered a relay so that way the entire system works. And it's very, it's used a lot in telecom to just go and enable different things um, without actually having to physically go over there and say toggle a switch or push a button like you would with the traditional thing. Essentially, again, a relay is just a switch that you control electronically instead of the, instead Instead of physically interacting with it. And there's two different variations that you can run into when you're dealing with relays. Um, normally open, commonly referred to as NO, or normally closed, NC. And these are basically just two different styles of a circuit. Um, where some devices need to be consistently energized with a normally closed circuit and then you de-energize the system for it to take an action or the inverse where the circuit is normally not completed the circuit is open you toggle the relay and that temporarily closes the circuit so that way electricity can flow it's basically two different variations of that depending on the application for the unit that you're dealing with and that helps you pick the particular device and accessory that you might be working with. You know, at the end of the day, as we're talking about the three different products that we're working with, you need to know the style of circuit that you're working with, a normally open or a normally closed style, so that way you can pick the right unit. It all is going to depend on the actual application of what you're trying to do. So another thing that just kind of helps illustrate this a little bit is how relays actually work. And this is an image that I've used before in some other um, videos, but it's a, it's a really good way to to kind of um, uh, give an example of how a normally, normally open or normally closed style circuit works. So on our right hand side here, we basically got a little electrical diagram and the two points that you wanna look at most are gonna be in the top right hand most corner of that image both labeled blue and green for normally closed being blue and normally open being green. So as we can see as the units here in its default state, um, the little switch from the red bubble up to kind of the brown bubble is towards the blue bubble up there. So that's basically our switch in its normal state. It's normally closed, meaning the circuit going from common through our red bubble up to our brown bubble connects to the blue and we've got a normally closed circuit. So that way, when when you decide to do something, say in the example of a telecom system, you punch in a DTMF code and it enables the relay, electricity flows through the relay, basically passing through this little coil here, and that creates a magnetic field, which pulls the switch down, breaking the normally closed circuit and closing the normally open circuit. So that way electricity can flow in this direction and toggles the that relay while no electricity is flowing through the normally closed section and toggles that relay. So you can, that's basically how an, a circuit would work in this style of a sense and be able to actually engage one of these different relays. Basically, electricity flows through it, magic happens, and things either connect or disconnect, depending on the type of relay that you're working with. It's really, really simple when you understand how everything works, but understanding this is part and parcel with being able to pick one of these units that we're going to talk about today. So next, we kind of, now that we understand how a relay works, let's talk a little bit more about CyberData products. The vast majority of our products, there's only a few key exceptions. 
um, that don't actually come with some kind of a relay on board. It's kind of a standard product that we provide with just about, or a standard feature of all of our products. There are a couple that don't have them, but for all the ones that do, we go with kind of the industry standard of a normally open style relay, where in our, pre our previous slide there, where the, the uh, switch is not connecting until the relay is activated, the switch closes, circuit is complete, and electricity can flow. So that's the normal um, fee, uh, relay that you'll get on all CyberData products. And when you're dealing with relays, it's typically either with access control style setups, you're going to use it to, say, remotely unlock a door, or you're dealing with connecting to an analog amplifier. And in the vast majority of connections for either of those kind of niches, industries, what have you, whatever terminology you want to use for those two sectors of our business, um, those traditionally are going to use a normally open style circuit where nothing is going on and then everything connects and it works. And the the um, access control realm, that's basically, you know, the what energizes the actual door strike that unlocks the door. Normally that is not engaged. So that way the door is locked. You close your relay, circuit is completed, door is unlocked, and somebody can pass through. And a similar thing, in a similar vein, the IP to analog style works, where you're trying to make an announcement, and your analog amplifier is playing background music. Your paging server or your paging adapter receives some kind of higher priority audio, whether it's a multicast stream or a SIP call, or maybe even Informicast and an Informicast enabled paging adapter variant. Um, it receives that and it closes its relay, which tells the amplifier that, hey, higher priority audio is coming through and it silences whatever it's doing before and then allows that uh, announcement to be played. So in most senses, that works. But there are some instances where you're going to need the inverse style of that kind of a circuit. You're going to need a normally closed style relay. And for that, you know, you're going to have to get one of the accessory products or one of our standalone products that we'll talk about a little bit more. But when you're dealing with our accessory products, you know, you basically get one either if you need a higher voltage style system higher voltage style relay capacity, and it's getting into the weeds of it. We don't really need to talk about it for the focus of this video, or if you needed a normally closed style relay. That's kind of two of the big reasons that you're gonna get one of, ex one of our accessories for use with one of your intercoms. Again, either you need a normally closed style relay, or you're dealing with something that's a higher voltage, higher amperage, you're dealing with say a, a gate controller instead of you know like a l regular little door strike. Um, in those type of instances, you might need one of our accessory products and definitely work with our team if you're not sure on what you're dealing with there. Um, and really, when you're taught when you're dealing with all of our different products that have these onboard relays, you're really not going to need a normally closed style relay for use in say IP to analog or with some of our speakers that also have an onboard relay on them. Traditionally, those are always going to be a normally open, temporarily closed style. You, I've never, and you know, the years that I've been doing stuff at CyberData, looking at different amplifiers that are literally older than I am sometimes, I've never encountered a system that needs a normally closed style circuit um, to interact with that. So those are traditionally kind of regulated and stuck in the access control segment. You're not really gonna run into that style of a circuit anywhere else. So let's talk about some relay applications and when you're going to actually use these different relays. Of course, the two main instances that we'll talk about are just going to be traditional access control and IP to analog solutions. So when you're dealing with, you know, traditional access control, um, you're going to be using, say, a door strike, which is going to use a normally open style relay. Um, or in some instances, you're going to use a magnetic lock that's going to have a normally closed style relay. And these are just two different ways to actually control locking a door. The more common option is by using a door strike where when the system is not engaged, meaning it's not electrified, it's in the locked position. And then you engage it, you electrify the system, complete the circuit, and then the system basically engages and the door is unlocked. So that's the most traditional option because it doesn't require any kind of energy to actually stay in the physical locked state. Whereas with a magnetic lock, that requires a normally closed circuit because they're electromagnets. They require electricity to flow through them to basically keep the big magnets stuck to like the steel plate or whatever they're using on the top of the door um, to go and, and actually keep the door physically shut. 
In some instances, magnetic locks can be substantially more secure because with a door strike, you're still dealing with, um, you know, like regular locking components that can be picked. When you're dealing with a magnetic lock, there's just force that's holding the door closed. Um, so it it's, can be a little bit more um, safe in that instance. But if you lose power and your fancy electronic magnet doesn't have electricity, <laughs> you need something else to keep that door closed. So a lot of the times electronic lo or magnetic locks are also paired with traditional physical security, lock and key, what have you, um, to go in and, you know, in the event of a power outage, um, to be able to keep that system locked. But when you're dealing with security at the end of the day, both are going to have physical locks on them and they're about the same security wise. You're not really getting that much more of a security benefit when you're dealing with, say, a door strike and a normally open style circuit or a magnetic lock and a normally closed style circuit. They're essentially the same. There are some differences, but generally the same. And then when you're dealing with your IP to analog system, some amplifiers, not all of them, are going to require some kind of a relay contact closure to actually control the background music. And this happens for a variety of reasons um, where they, they're either using the analog amplifier for some kind of background music or some kind of other audio signal that is um, being played through the system when it's idle um, or it's just not active and the speakers aren't doing that kind of hum that they'll do when they're active and they're not playing anything. And when a device gets some kind of a higher priority audio, it triggers the onboard relay, which then triggers the analog amplifier and has it play the audio. Um, and like I said earlier, Every single IP to analog style device that I've ever interfaced with is if it needs a relay, it's going to be a normally open style relay where you short the two pins together to go and cause something to happen. Um, so that's kind of different relay applications that you'll run into. So now let's relate it back to our products. So for the two relay accessories that we'll talk about, we've got the 011269, which is our door strike intermediate relay module. This is kind of your simple bare bones option. It's got both your normally open and your normally closed style relay. And it's good for you know dealing with higher, higher power circuits, whether it's higher voltage, higher amperage, what have you. Um, it's just, you know, if you're gonna be, say, if you wanted to run something through your intercom, but it's above that one amp at 30 volt DC that our, um, onboard relay supports. You need something like this, or again, if you're dealing with a normally closed style circuit, you're throwing in a mag lock, you need, um, you know, this kind of an accessory. One potential downside to this is it's physically connected to the intercom, where the intercom closes its relay, it completes the circuit, which then tells the connected door strike intermediate relay module that it needs to either close its normally open circuits or open its normally closed style circuits. So that way it can interface with it with whatever it's working to. And that does create a potential security flaw. Well, if you're concerned at all about a security flaw or you're dealing with two doors, um, we've got a product, our 011375, our network dual door strike relay. So this is kind of your more advanced option. Again, it has both the normally open and normally closed style relays that you would kind of expect. It's also rated for a higher power circuit and it can control one door. That's kind of the most common use case that we have for this particular product. I'd say probably about 70 to 80% of our customer base use it for a single door but it can be used for two doors, not in say a side-by-side -side style, but in a man trap style where you come in through the first door and then you're let through the second door. So that way, you know, it could be say to enter a clean room, could be, you know, a jeweler's area, currency exchange, what have you, creates that kind of a man trap scenario. And one security benefit to the network dual door strike relay over the onboard relay of the intercom itself for a product like our intermediate relay module is there's no physical connection between the network dual door strike relay and the intercom that's controlling it. So that way all communication and actual opening of the door is handled over the actual network so that way any of the actual you know wires that would be say connected or uh, uh, disconnected to open the door are on the secure side of the door which means that it's that much harder for somebody to gain access to the facility so then we come to our dual relay controller which is a little bit different of the two it uses a similar hardware platform to our network dual door strike relay, but it has more capability as compared to that unit. This one actually is a full SIP-based relay controller, meaning that it can register with your phone system and provide you the capability 
for two different relay connections. Again, both normally open and normally closed style relays, so you can connect to either style device. And this can be as simple as just connecting it to a door for regular door control where you don't necessarily need an intercom. Say it could be, you know, an interior door in inside a building that, you know, you want to keep locked outside of business hours, but you want to keep it open during certain times, or you want the capability to control it, say, over the phone. Um, you have that kind of capability to do that, or you can use it for actual device management, not the kind of techie device management where you're managing devices over the network with some kind of utility or something like that. It can literally be for, say, controlling a fan system, a humidity system. It can be used to manage hardware devices with control of its relays. Um, also, paired with that, kind of for the device management aspect of it, it has two onboard sensor inputs, which are basically the inverse of a relay, where on our end, the relay is either we're connecting two pins together or we're unconnecting two pins and the connected device does something, where a sensor is the exact opposite of that. We've got two pins that are waiting for either a circuit to be broken that they're connected to or to be connected together. So that way, if something goes on with something in a common use case that we've actually implemented this product for is for use in kind of a, a growing facility where they've got different temperature monitors and humidity monitors and those different sensors have little onboard relays on them and the relays trigger when the sensor is triggered and it sends off other notifications to other systems that they work with but they've also got that nice little onboard relay and when that onboard relay triggers it tells the dual relay controller that something has happened and it makes a phone call out to alert you of something that's going on and then you can enter a DTMF tone to go and say kick on a fan to reduce the humidity or kick on sprayers or a mister to increase the humidity so it gives you a really easy way to control equipment without having to physically interact with it you can just handle it over a phone call which depending on the phone system that you have could allow you to control something like that remotely I could have seen this being very useful at cyber data with a particular problem that we have the pump that handles pumping stuff out to um, wherever it pumps stuff to. I don't know where it goes to, but I could have seen this being very handy for us at CyberData, and it's just a great device management tool that you can utilize. So now that we understand all the different options, we got to pick the right device. So when you're dealing with access control in an intercom, when you actually want to utilize an intercom, you're going to be using either of the relay accessory devices. Either of them can do it. They're both going to have normally open or normally closed style relays. They're both rated for about the, a similar rate of high power. But the network dual door strike relay is a little bit more secure because there's no physical connection between the two. So that's something to consider when you're picking one of the different um, uh, relay access control accessories. Then we move on to either access control without an intercom where you don't need one or actually controlling a device and getting notifications from that. If you want to say control a doorway, but you don't need an intercom there, or you've got hardware or different machines that you want to control remotely and have notifications through your phone system that might not be, be able to, might not be provided by that particular piece of equipment that you're working with, that's where that SIP dual relay controller would come in. So at the end of the day, as we're dealing with these different relay accessories, they're going to allow you to connect to different controllers, um, whether they're for a door or for a different system that, would, that could require either a higher power rating than one of our standard onboard intercoms can or onboard relays can support, or if they're going to need different circuit requirements. You know, you could have a very low wattage, normally closed style relay that you need, but that doesn't work with our onboard onboard relay on an intercom because it's normally open. It's just a different style of a circuit. So depending on what you're working with, um, relay accessories can be very, very beneficial. And if you're concerned at all about security as you're looking at these different options, the network dual door strike relay is always going to be one of the, the best in the industry in terms of physical security when you're controlling a door with an intercom because it keeps everything that actually controls the unlocking of the door on the secure side of the door. So that way, no matter how hard somebody tries, unless they've got a set of lock picks with them, they're not getting through that door. And finally, when you're dealing with the dual relay controller, it's a really interesting product that is, you know, in the existing niche of telecom and a bigger niche of actual device management and hardware management, because it allows you to control 
multiple devices or different devices using its sensors um, through an actual phone system. So super cool products and de definitely very capable, awesome stuff that you can utilize. Thank you for watching this edition of CyberSchool. If you have any questions, please get in contact with our sales department. They are available by email at sales at cyberdata.net or by phone at 831-373-2601 extension 334. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe for more content like this from Cyberdata.